Here's our video tutorial uh, for using Microsoft Excel to compute some descriptives of interest. We're going to start with the median. The median is the middle value. It means half okay. of the... Half you see, we already did uh, sum and average last time. Yes. Yeah, and that's what you're looking at. So now we're going to show how to do a median. What is the median? The middle value, the 50th percentile. Half the data is above it and half is below it. So if you get a median score in a class, you know that you beat half the class, but half the class beat you. You're kind of on the line, right in the middle, the median. So we're going to do median now. Watch. So first I type median, middle value. OK. And now I go to the function wizard. I look for median. And let me find it. There's median. Oops, I lost it. There's median. I say OK. And again, you got to make sure you got the data set. The data set, as you know, is from D2 to D13. D2 to D13. Okay, that's called my input data. So we type in D2. Maybe we can just um, grab it. You can do it that way. It's like, oh, it went too high. Okay. It went too far. There we go. Maybe we'll okay. do that. Ah, did oh, that we, work? We grabbed it, yes. And it's D2 to D13. Yes. Great. Let's click OK. All right. And there we got. There's the median. 71.5. It means half the class, if this is a class of 12 students, half did above 71.5, half are below it. Okay, now again, generally these, these kind of statistics you may not want to use for uh, 12 observations, especially the next one called quartiles. Now, when you talk about a quartile, that's uh, the first quartile is essentially the 25th percentile. It means 25% are below you, 75% are above you. So you don't write quartile, you have to indicate which one. So I'm going to type Q1, first quartile. While you do that, I'll just explain. Uh, you have you three quartiles that break up your data set into four equal pieces. You're taking a data set and making three cuts in order to make it turn it into four equal pieces. Q1 is the first quartile. 25% uh, of the data is smaller than that value, 75% greater, and so on. Okay, so you did Q. One, Q3, we already know Q2. Uh, Q2 is the same as the median. Which is also the same as the 50th percentile. Exactly. So let's get Q1. Go to the function wizard. Look for quartile. Now this exclude, include, don't worry about that. Because if, if you have no missing data, it's the same either way. Sometimes you have an issue. We have a huge data set, let's say uh, 200 values, and let's say two of the values are, could be words, like yes or no or something. So the question is whether you want to exclude them, you know, because it affects the sample size. So don't worry about it, because we don't have that in, in this course. For this course, I wouldn't worry about it. Yeah, so I'm going to use the first one, exclude, just because nothing to exclude. Okay, I say okay. And now notice, it, it, now it's calling it an array. What it called number before, is now an array. So I'll let you grab the so data. Let's grab it again. Grab the data from D2 to D, D13. Data has been grabbed. There we okay, go. Okay, there it is. And now, quart. Tell, you want to know which quartile you're asking for. So it tells you, if you look at the bottom, quart is a number. Well, minimum value is zero. A zero does not, it makes no sense. That's just to get the minimum. It's not really a quart. You don't need, yeah, you don't need to call that a quartile. Yeah, there really is just. Q1 and Q3. The median is Q2. So let's do right one. I want the first quartile here. And now I say OK. Now that's the quartile. Now again, with a data set of 12, it's kind of ridiculous to break it up into quartiles and we're going to do percentiles soon. But you get the idea. In the real world, you might be working with, you know, 5 million numbers. Yeah, you can okay. do that one on your own. I'm not doing yeah. that for you. No, well, let's do it. Let's <laughs> let the class type in 5 million numbers. <laughs> they, they have nothing else to do this weekend. Okay, now we did Q1. Here's you can Q just copy the formula from Q1 into Q3 and change the 1 into a 3. Is that yeah. too advanced? Too advanced. Uh, <laughs> okay. We always do things easy. 
right. is Q3. We look for quartile again. Okay. And now uh, I'll let you grab the data. We know where it's, the data is located. D2 all the way down to D13. Okay. And now we, it says quart. You put in a, it's asking for a number like zero, one, two. You don't want zero. But three, that's the third quartile. And, and this is the value for which 75% of the data is smaller, 25% of the data is larger. Now, the next thing we're going to do is percentile. Now, there are 99 actual percentiles. We're cutting up the data into 100 pieces, 100 equal size pieces. Okay, so P1 would be the first percentile. P2 is the second percentile. As a matter of fact, P25, the 25th percentile, that means you're above 25%, but 75% are above you. That's the Q1. The 50th percentile is also the median. The 75th percentile is the third quartile. So you, when you say percentile here, you have to indicate which one. So we're going to make this just randomly the 80th uh, percent. Huh? Oh, okay. I was going to ask for the 90th. Oh, because wants... if these are exam scores and you're in the 90th percentile, you want to go home and tell your parents that. All right. So we'll ask for now. Again, with 12 observations, you don't really calculate 90th percentiles. Okay, I'm going to let you enlarge this. Nobody knows yeah. who's doing it. Yeah, but we, we have to make it bigger. Notice how we widen the column? Okay. Good idea to widen the column. You so see, you do it, you go all the way up. When you see that black cross, highlight the column. And now you can make it bigger, smaller. You can drag it. I made it a little too big, but all right. Good enough. All right, but plenty of room to work. So now, again, I'm going to use the 90th percentile. It could have been, really, if you, if you have nothing to do this week, you know, put in 100 numbers and get the first percentile, P1, second percentile, P2, third percentile, P3, then P4. Yeah, but make P5. sure to enter millions of numbers first. Go right ahead. Yes, okay. We're doing the 90th percentile. Okay, so now I go to the function wizard. I look for percentile. Again, with the exclude, don't worry about that. You know, the same with the exclude, the include. Okay, but you want percentile. Okay, we'll take the exclude. Now don't, it's not percent rank, it's percentile. And the exclude is, don't worry about that. You want percentile. I say, okay. Okay, now here's the array. We know that's D2 to D13. I'm going to let my Let's colleague. Let's put in the array. My colleague is going to. I have a very important job here. Yes, you put in the okay. array correctly. Now, K. It's, we want the 90th percentile. Now, in some programs, you might put the word, uh, the number 90, but they're asking for a value between 0 and 1, so you have to put 0.90. For 90th percentile, it's 0.90. Suppose we wanted the 77th percentile. You'd be, be putting in 0.77. Okay, so make sure it's a decimal between 0 and 1, as per instructions. So 0.90 gives you the 90th percentile, and I say OK. And there I got the 90th Perfect. percentile. That's 99. Great. Again, with 12 numbers, this is a kind of a little ridiculous. But you get the idea. That I'm showing you how to get the percentile. And the last thing... One more thing. We already saw how to get the mean. Uh, the complement to that is the standard deviation. Uh, with, with a lot of, If you want a lot of um, quantitative information, you're usually getting a mean and a standard deviation, right? Yeah, standard deviation is something you've heard. You learn about it. It's a measure of dispersion, and you should know how to get it. Okay. Watch how easy it is. Now, you have to be careful, because there are actually two kinds of standard deviations. If you're working with a sample, you'll find that in the formula, you divide by n minus 1. It's called losing a degree of freedom. If you're working with a census, then you use standard deviation for a population, and you divide by n, the sample size. You'll learn more about that in your course. Uh, we're just pointing it out now so you know what formula to use. Yeah, and this way you can impress your boss because you're going to be confused otherwise. You see the standard deviation? S-T-D-E-V dot P. P stands for population or parameter. It's when you have a census. In this course, and in most, in most places, you're going to be working with a sample. You've taken a sample. 
So you need standard deviation dot s for the sample or a statistic. Okay. And I say okay. And again, now it's calling it not an array. We're back to using the word number. The number. So it's like D2 to D13. There. And now, now uh, that's all you need. Oh, oh you okay. just added a number. You didn't yeah, need that's to. All right. It wasn't necessary, but that's all you yeah, need. Just okay. to put the, where the data is located. And I say OK. And there's your standard deviation. OK, so now we've learned how to get a standard yeah. deviation. And there are other statistics. We yes. may want to we may want to change the number of significant digits here. Format cells make it a number with just two significant digits, and that's that just looks a little nicer. Depend. You ask your teacher uh, what you should do yeah. with that. You can also add this in the menu. There's a place to add decimals. You'll see the menu. There's a place where it says you can add decimals or subtract decimals. That's another way to do it. But most of the time, two decimal places are more than enough. So now we've learned now we've learned how to um, uh, how to get various descriptive statistics. And good luck. All right, do your homework.